Hello, dear people. My name is Volker Schmitz, and this is Dr. Arthur Rakimov, and we are doing now a fourth part part of a video about dysautonomia related tests. And in this fourth part, I want to ask you, Arthur, about more uh, complex situations or uncommon cases because there are some of them and we want to discuss them. Yes, yeah, we discussed three DIY tests how we can check general stress in the autonomous nervous system or the static probe, so exactly. called for POTS especially. And then we discussed how to test parasympathetic overactivation sympathetic, and sympathetic, yeah. both of them. Yeah, we started actually sympathetic than parasympathetic. Yes. But there are also sometimes more complex situations when people doing the same DIY heart rate test while transitioning from either from horizontal to vertical position or the opposite position, yeah. when the changes in heart rate can be much more complex. Mm -hmm. So the normal situation, as we discussed, when we stand in cup, heart first lying down, heart yeah. rate the same, then it increases, yeah. then it stays the same. Yeah. So this is normal. The, more healthy. the sympathetic overactivation, as we discussed, heart rate increases, then it overshoots yeah. by 5, 10 beats often higher, but then it goes down. And that overactivation of the sympathetic nervous system is manifested in the presence of this increase over increase of heart rate because later it goes yeah. down and stays at the lower level. Yeah. Now we discussed also parasympathetic overactivation. When we have this depression, when we have depression, yeah. because we start parasympathetic uh, DIY test in the standing position and we lie down, so sure. heart rate decreases. But instead of uh, stabilizing at the final level, it goes too down and then it starts to increase up. So at this level of depression of the whole can be up to three, five, seven, maybe in severe cases, 10 beats per minute less than it's expected. So this is parasympathetic. And these are the three common cases. These are re relatively common difficult. studied, yeah, because probably so easy to learn with a with a DIA test. Co coaches, doctors, uh, I knew it from professional sport experience about yeah. this test, and now in health also, also it's getting much more known, popular. But uh, what I'm going to discuss, there are more complex situations, and some of them uh, of these complex situations can be easily tested with the same transition between horizontal and vertical position. Yeah. So let's say somebody stands up and what ha can happen in the rare cases of dysautonomia, the heart rate in the line position, let's say 70 beats per minute. So mm -hmm. 70, 70, 70, if we like measure in time, this person is lying down, 70, 71, so low heart rate. When the, this person stands up, heart rate shoots up to let's say 90. Okay. But in case of complex dysautonomia, the heart rate can go up to uh, 90. Yeah. But then <laughs> what happens, heart rate drops to HT yeah. due to parasympathetic yeah. disbalance oh. and then it rises back up to 90. So we have both probably. Then. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of, it's not overshoot actually, it's kind of overshoot but it goes down, and then it increases right? yeah. and depression, both of them, yeah. yeah really. And then it stays at the same level stably because that uh, would be quite serious case of dysautonomia because the heart rate again in healthy normal situation heart rate just increases from let's say 70 to 90 and then it stays at this level would be very very little variations like plus minus one two beats a minute maybe just due to mistake of measurements so that's a complex case that means kind of disbalance between both parasympathetic and sympathetic the opposite situation is also possible Think some other way. people maybe not necessarily the same people some other people may have let's say if the person is standing yeah. it's 90 beats per minute 90 90 90 the person is standing so the heart rate is the same now the same person go to into horizontal position takes one two seconds the person just slides down but continue to measure heart rate so heart rate starts to decrease 10 20 seconds later heart rate goes down to 70. Mm -hmm. now normally it should stay at 70 because several In minutes later it's going to be 70 health. yes but in this complex case of dysautonomia heart rate goes to 70 then it increases up to 80 yeah. gradually increases takes maybe 5 10 seconds heart rate goes yeah. high 15 seconds then it goes down back again yeah. and then it stabilizes at 70 after two three minutes or, it, or maybe a little bit higher would be the stabilization uh, it may go so do we also have off. this depression kind and this shooting over and, and, and this yeah we thing. have kind of both kind of a depression yeah. at the beginning and yeah. the too high but then it stabilizes at the same level so, so it would be yeah. complex cases of dysautonomia and that's just kind of a tool a technique how we can measure it because 
in my view, the solution when it relates to uh, this complex cases of dysautonomia relates to how we can uh, address the whole autonomous nervous system, the nervous system function, and we do uh, that, and this is what I teach already for uh, 15 years, we do briefing retraining. Yeah.